So today I want to bring up a subject that is beginning asked a lot, the longevity of retiring in Vietnam. I notice a trend is you'll get these honeymooners. This is the best spot in the world. You guys have to come and retire. You can do it. It's so cheap. Everything's so beautiful. And they're in this honeymoon phase where they don't truly realize what's going on. And on top of that, they're living heavily in a tourist area. So everything that they're experiencing and seeing is where everything's just new and exciting but it's also kind of intended to make you feel that way. Once you get out of that city, once you get out of Hanoi, Vietnam is not so welcoming. It is not as promising as a lot of people think. So today, after this long intro I just ran you through, hopefully you're still here. You should be because this is important information today. I'm gonna talk about this same subject, but I'm gonna give you this perspective of somebody that has lived in Asia for 10, 12 years now. Somebody that understands the legalities, the reality of it, and the culture and the system of what is expected, what you're going to run into, and how it goes. So let's stop talking. Let's get into the very first one. Why are people actually leaving the West? It's getting overly expensive to live in a lot of these countries now. This is where moving abroad comes in. So the cost of living in Asia is definitely way cheaper. I want to say like 99% of people I talk to that move out here to work, live, get married, all that stuff. They always say cost of living is their main motive to come out here. The next one is just a work-life balance. If you work in the West, you're probably working a lot and you don't have free time. You have a big house, you have a family, you have all this and that, but you can't do anything. You know, you live next door to a Disneyland and you can't go there because you're working all the time, right? This is something that you get in Asia where you can pretty much get away with like part-time and live above your means to the point where you can do whatever you want. You know, if you've gotten my eBooks, and you've gotten your TEFL and you've become a teacher out here, you, you've realized you can work like seven to 15 hours a week and be comfortable. And you're able to travel, you're able to get on a plane and fly out to like Thailand. A lot of people come out to Southeast Asia, they go to the main cities, they're like the quality of life out here is so much better than my home country, wherever that might be. And they don't realize that typically governments keep these spots clean for perception reasons. Once you get outside of a lot of these cities, it's kind of bad with the exception of thailand thailand is actually i think one of the cleaner countries in southeast asia places like vietnam for example once you get out of the main tourist areas dude vietnam's a landfill hanoi is like the fifth or seventh most polluted city in the world like it's insane so the quality of life is good in certain spots now the big ones are the retirement option in southeast asia you can definitely retire a lot cheaper than you can in the west like in the west like i think america is right now at like what 2.3 million us dollars in your savings account to actually retire in america at this point you definitely need a whole lot less than a million dollars to retire comfortably and the very last reason why people typically come out here is for love and marriage typically asian women are more traditional when it comes to like take care of the husband being the, the wife the mother of the family they're not out here trying to be the boss girl and try to dominate everything now this is starting to change drastically where the women pretty much are starting to act like american women this is gonna give me in trouble with some friends but i think thailand is one or vietnam is one of the worst spots to actually come out here trying to find marriage at a, at a faster rate you really need to take it slow because what you would consider wrong is considered normal now when you do move out here, you have to consider some of the challenges. And I wanna talk about some things you should really be ready for in the longevity of this stuff. Again, when you first get out here, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna see things you've never seen. You need to be ready for the culture adjustment. Once you do decide to stay out here and get married and have a long-term life out here, you're going to have to adjust to the culture. You're going to probably have to learn some of the language. You're going to have to accept a lot of things that are not acceptable to you back home. And I, I meet a lot of Western people that do come out here. They try to change the culture. They try to adjust people's mindsets to think like them. And they don't understand that the, the mind in Asia starts as early as primary school. And it goes on for 15 to 18 years. And the, they're raised by parents that went through the same process. So to teach kids to, or your wife, whoever you might be talking to, to think differently like Western, it, it is a very big challenge. You're not gonna win. Like you're, you're fighting like 70 years of like mindsets. This idea that you come out here and just wing it, marry some random local chick and you can just get by for the rest of your life. You can kind of do that, but you're kind of isolating yourself outside of the culture and you're isolating your life from pretty much everything. The moment I really got my Vietnamese down was when Vietnam really opened up to me and that options and doors started opening. 
Now, when it comes to being out here, one of the big issues is visas, uh, how to stay out here and retirement visas. Places like Vietnam don't offer anything. You can't get married. I, I had a comment actually update me. I, I contacted one of my lawyers about it. He verified it. it is that the 10 year marriage TRC in Vietnam is no longer a thing. It's, it's actually suspended. And from my understanding, from what I was told from my lawyer and a few people that work in certain spots, they said the problem they found is when Westerners come here long term, they stop spending money. The people above, they don't see the value of having an American or Australian person come here long term and start spending money like a Vietnamese person, even though they have money like the Westerner. You see what I'm saying? And this is, I think, a big reason why tourism visas are regulated the way they are now like six months are pretty much they're trying to cut people off from coming here longer than six months on tourist visas when people stay here long term they don't spend money which makes sense you know why would you spend twenty dollars on a meal when you could just go to a local shop and spend 75 cents so the government's not seeing a benefit to you guys retiring out here so vietnam has never had a retirement option like i people fight me on this maybe i know too much maybe i know the right people maybe i know the wrong people i don't know but I don't see the benefit of Vietnam ever offering a long-term retirement visa. There is no benefit to the government. Like they don't want influence. This is a factory-based company. Westerners aren't moving to Vietnam to get the hard labor and factory work. They're not moving to Vietnam to open companies because there is no ingenuity here. There's no, no real innovation in Vietnam. And Vietnam is a factory country. And I don't want, it's not a downplay, it's just, it's what Vietnam does. So what's come up in this talk is they're considering the 10 year back, but having some kind of a Thailand theory behind it where there's fees every year or something like that, like a, a verification process where the Western has to pay money to update this thing, whatever this thing is. I don't know if this thing is a marriage extension visa TRC thing or a retirement, whatever it is. It really comes down to money. There's not any money incentives for the government to keep people here long term. So if you are looking to retire, Malaysia, if, if you really want to suck that up, uh, uh, Thailand actually offers many different ways to do this. Cambodia offers ways to do this. Laos offers ways to do this. Singapore offers a very easy way to do this if you have money. It's not a cheap country, mind you. And then Indonesia is another option. They offer a nomad visa, I believe. Same as Malaysia starting to do one as well. Ideally, in Southeast Asia, everyone offers long-term solutions except Vietnam. Now, the big question, how much money is enough to live in Vietnam? I've seen so many numbers fly around. I would say personally, 500,000 US locked in, already taxed. You would be 100% fine for the rest of your life. That's gonna be an overkill. This guarantees you never have to work. This guarantees you don't have to worry about insurance issues. This guarantees you don't have to worry about financing for paying for rent. This guarantees that you won't have to worry about proving your income to the governments when you wanna renew any type of visa or citizenship or residency that you have to go through. So 500 would be enough. The next one is health, lifestyle, and the communities living out here. These are things you should consider, obviously. The communities are very different. There's not like the lifestyle that you're gonna see. You're not gonna have your weekend football games with your buddies at the house. You're actually gonna give up like all your hobbies and your, your stuff. There's just no way to do a lot of stuff out here. Like. I think the biggest sport is like bad bad badminton, but it's not even taken serious. People go to the parking lots and play it, you know, while they're smoky. Like they they play for five minutes, get bored, sit down, and go to sleep. But there's not really much out here. Communities, it's very hard. Yeah, you have your expat community, but a lot of the expat community are younger people trying to party. There's not really an older expat community that just wants to like, you know, go play poker at the park on the weekends and you know, like share, have family picnics and whatnot, stuff like that. Like that doesn't happen in Asia. That's something that people really miss when they come out here to retire is a lot of that stuff they're used to and what they saw their parents live through as a retirement age, you're not gonna find it out here. When it comes to the health, uh, have healthcare, I guess, but you're probably gonna see a deterioration in your health overall. The foods, despite what people say, is extremely processed out here. Chemicals used in vegetables and meats and uh, steroids and hormones is a big concern out here. There's no regulations. Like understand that. So the fact that there's no regulations means that you typically don't hear about it. Nobody cares out here. Literally nobody cares. They sell meat on the side of a sidewalk on a busy intersection. Your health is going to definitely take an impact. When I left Vietnam after like seven years ago back to the West, 
for about six months. I literally de-aged. The one I, get, I hear about a lot is having children in Southeast Asia. Having kids in Asia, this is a big concern. You don't have freedom of education in most of Asia, like most of Asia. You have to send your kids to some school. A lot of these education schools, especially public ones, are, doc, are, are focused more towards governmental education, meaning that they're creating loyalty. These international schools have to follow the Vietnamese curriculum to an extent. Not fully, but they have to teach to accept. Because you understand, they have Vietnamese kids that go to these international schools too. And they can't be teaching Vietnamese kids freedom of speech. And the you do need to be careful. A lot of people I've talked to have said they're gonna homeschool their kids. But again, if you get married in these countries and you have children in these countries, homeschool is not an option sometimes. If your kid was born abroad and you bring him to Vietnam as like a four-year-old that they live here, that's a different story. I'm talking about if you have children here. You marry a Vietnamese, a Thai person, whatever, you have a child in this country. It's registered and born in this country, these countries. You will be under those standards. Next one is money in the long run. And I kind of already talked about this. You should have some kind of savings. You need to have some kind of income. A lot of people come in here thinking, I'm going to be a teacher forever. And if you, if that's your idea, check the ebooks, figure out how to be the best of the best, because it's getting harder to do this job and keep it. Do not come out here thinking you're going to be a teacher forever. That, that's such a fallacy people have. And they realize, because the biggest problem with it isn't keeping the job, it's people just get burnt out. Most of your classes are primary level kids. Most English centers and most of Asia are just daycares undercover. If you are gonna come out here in the long run, make sure you do have money and you have that freedom because money buys you freedom, it buys you time. But if you come out here thinking you're gonna be a teacher for 20 years, you're gonna be disappointed. I think after like five or six years, it'll really start to hit you. So the very last thing, what are your long-term goals? What is your idea of retirement? A lot of people think you retire, you get a, lot, a, a white picket fence and a yard, it's quiet. A lot of these countries don't have that. These are a developing nation. So this means that a lot of these countries are dynamic. Things are constantly changing. Things are constantly getting bulldozed. Places like Vietnam, it's always construction. And when it comes to family back home, if you do come out here and your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, your uncles, whoever's back home in America or the UK, they're most likely not gonna come visit you. When you leave and move to Asia as a retirement, understand you're kind of saying goodbye to family to an extent, unless you plan on going back to America yourself or back to the UK or wherever, you're pretty much saying goodbye to a physical relationship with your family because there is no real way to make it work. They're not gonna fly here. No, I have so many Vietnamese American friends. I have a lot of Chinese American friends. None of them wanna come here. I've, I think I've had like two or three Vietnamese friends in my life living here in Asia ever come visit. I got Thai friends in America that are old military friends that won't visit here, that won't go to Thailand. They don't want to deal with that stuff, you know? And it's a 24 hour flight. It's expensive. You have to plan it. You have to call out in your job. Like there's too many complications. I strongly suggest you guys test drive your idea. You want to move to Vietnam long term? Cool. Come out here, live out here, for, get a three month visa and kick it. And don't live in the tourist city. Go where you actually want to be. If you want to live in Hoi An, if you want to live in Da Nang, if you want to live in Phan Thien, if you want to live in Da Lai, if you want to live in Hanoi, go there and live there and experience what the life is. I meet so many people that move to Saigon. I love it out here, woo, this is beautiful. They sell everything, they move out here. They're like, I don't want to be in the city. I want to go to this spot. And they realize the place absolutely sucks. So go where you want to live. But when you start living there, things change. When you do come out here, decide where you want to be. And if you don't know, that's fine. Travel around, explore different areas in those three to six months. You actually stay out here and explore. Make local friends and start seeing these cities and these towns. Go to their houses, meet their families and see what life is actually like out here. Test drive what you're doing. You wouldn't buy a used car without test driving. You wouldn't buy a house without having an inspection on it. So why would you make such a life-changing decision without even knowing what you're putting your foot into? So hopefully this information helps you out. This is a longer than normal video, but I think the information needs to be out there for you guys. So if you have any questions, leave them below. If you are in the members group, you're gonna see a lot of extra content related to this video and some other videos and teaching information to help you out. And check out the eBooks if you don't know how to teach or if you are question getting your job, take it from me. We are on day one of the summer right now, and I'm already seeing on Zalo and WhatsApp, people are getting fired today. It's getting harder, and the ones that are getting released are the not serious teachers. They want the real teachers, they want the serious ones. So check out those eBooks. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna get out. So till then, I will see you 
again